maybe one day I could probably get my BMW to sound like this. All right, so we got her at Jeb's. We're gonna go tear this down. We drain the oil. Uh, so what we gotta do is we gotta pull the K-member and we're gonna kinda see what we have to tackle next. And uh, hopefully, God willing, there is a nut in the oil pan and hopefully we can stick her back on there, weld it up and be on our way. Now, if not, that's our fork in the road. <laughs> you know, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do and uh, if we're gonna have to put another engine in this, we might have to do some inspection of, you know, whatever is going Maybe on there. Pump. We're gonna have some sort of resolution here in a little bit, but I guess this is- There's gotta be something glaring at us and telling us why it's not happening already. Yeah. So we're gonna find out in just a little bit here and we'll take you guys with us. So we pulled the two belly pan pieces right there. Next, we're trying to figure out which way we're gonna go. Okay, so the pan goes from here all the way to the bell housing. So we started to remove some of the bolts from the bell housing. They Drop are. the control arms from the spindles uh -huh. and then drop the tie rod ends from the spindles and then drop the whole cross member with the rack and everything. Okay, so all this kind of has to move so we can pull this down and see if we've got, you know, we'll see what we have going on with the oil pan, so. I think the sway bar can stay though. Chipping away at what we're gonna do here, so we'll, uh, we'll find out what we gotta pull each way. So the K member does have to come down up here and we're not sure if we're gonna have to pull the rack yet, but we're gonna find out. Possibly this way, Barbara. Not sure. So we'll see. Great success. Oh. Yeah. Squishy, squishy. So here we go. We're going to see if uh, what we have going on here. So let's just hope and pray that we got the, the nut is off the oil pump drive, which I don't know what that's supposed to look like, but you're supposed to find it somewhere in the oil pan. All right, so we just moved the power steering pump out of the way, and I think this is going to be our moment of truth. I think that the nut is off, and it looks like it. So that's our oil pump right there. And then look, yep, 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 yep. Hell yeah. There you go. So the nut is literally off that right there. So we got a nut in there. We're going to have to weld that. That's a lot of work, man. That's kind of crazy for a, a BMW, and this is a known fact, but I want to say thank you guys for all of you that had mentioned that. It was one of the things that I wanted to do on my list kind of crazy that it actually happened as quickly as it happened so let's just hope and pray that this motor is still good i haven't heard it like clacking like crazy but there you go she has no nut boom <laughs> so yeah that guy i guess we're gonna have to weld on there and then we should be able to get oil pressure again that is crazy that's such a crazy it weird crazy. it's crazy i mean it's like I like the engineering of this, but that is not a well-engineered piece right it's there. It's a part that sucks. Yeah. Now we have to do my car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's crazy, man. So 193,000 miles, all right? And uh, I've only put 160 miles on this car. 160 miles. Now, granted, they were very hard miles. I'm, I'm just going to have to... I'm, I'm blaming Cletus. It was his fault. No, it's totally Cletus' fault. <laughs> it was the last J-turn... That was the one that did it. <laughs> Doesn't look bad. I mean, no, the, the engine's really clean. We, oh, look at our pickup screen. It's totally fine. Totally fine. We we kind of thought that there might have been a uh, an Claw. issue with a pickup screen or something like that, but nope. Totally, funny. everything looks totally right. good. I mean, it really it really is solid. So we're gonna clean that guy up. We'll jam this sucker back on there. Welder, and we'll put uh, a little tacky tack tack weld on there, and that'll be that. Yeah, man. Well, that's great news. Heck yeah. That's freaking awesome. So this has... There she goes. That's the splineage. So now now it'll actually drive again. Yeah. But it just came off and slid forward and that was it. I wonder if this was one of those deals where if they had like reverse threaded it. Oh, I think it is. I think. Oh, it is, it is reverse thread. Yeah. It is reverse thread. Because it turns on counterclockwise. Yep. Well, guys, if you're out there drifting your E46 or actually I hear this is a problem on some of the E36s or something... It's the M50, M52, M54. I guess they're all a problem. Gotta, gotta do something about that. Well, this is how you do it. So we drop the pan and we're gonna weld that guy up. Jeb, what you gonna do? We're gonna tack this little nut on the oil pump drive sprocket.
I can, I yeah, you can literally see oil oozing out. I got a couple really good packs on it, though. Well, very good. I'd say you're going to probably blow this engine up before you'll have to replace the whole pump. That's what we're open for. <laughs> so hopefully never have to do that again, but hey, lesson learned. Thank you guys so much for the comments. That was really, 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 really helpful because I would have been totally lost. Been like, what, what, what did we do? I don't even know this platform. How the hell did we uh, just hurt this thing? So I only had it for 160 miles and we already ran it into the ground. I was like, I'm not ready to do that yet. Let's try and run this thing into, a gr into the ground, but let's have some way more fun with it. We're going to try to make as much NA power as possible. Uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy optimizing stuff. If you guys have seen any of my other videos, what we've done with the Caprice, what we've done with the Miata, what we've done with the Escalade, I really like optimizing things all the way through so we can kind of stair step and be like, hey, we put this intake manifold on there and we made this much power. We put this much boost on it, we made this much power. Which, of course, leads us to eventually we are going to have a turbo and or some sort of force induction on here coming up very, very soon. So a small problem now. We just created more work for Jeb because he's going to have to do this, I guess, two more times, right? <laughs> yeah, it, I have uh, my E46, same car, yeah. and I'm not going to play that game, so I'll have to redo that. And then I have an E21 with the same motor in it. That car doesn't get, per se, drifted, so it's probably okay, you know? But your but black car is like going to, it's been it's gonna be driven black as hard or harder than mine, for sure. So. Jeb's definitely got a major advantage of uh, time, experience, and uh, he's got a better setup car right now. And uh, <laughs> and I mean, he's freaking good. So I mean, I I'm taking his lead, but uh, this is definitely a good, you know, this interesting twist. This is cool twist. because you're doing like some <clears throat> horsepower stuff. Yeah. Experimentation, mm -hmm. and I kind of get to like follow that lead. The moment of truth here. It's about four hours worth of work, something like that ish. We're gonna try and crank this thing up and. Let's just hope that everything works here. Quieting. Does it have the light? Hey, it's quieting down. Man, it's noisy though. Pretty noisy still. Hey. Sounds like it's going all right, though. It was really loud, and then it quieted down a lot. It's still pretty noisy, though. Yeah, it's a little bit, but it's going to take a second for that thing to get back. All right, so it's kind of like we're still uh, kind of 50-50 here. The Maybe. The light is off. Okay. So we had this light up here, and now that is gone. So we're making oil pressure. That's good. All right, we've been a couple minutes here right now, and normally I would have expected a lifter to pump up right now. So, I mean... We've had a couple times where it's taken maybe five, eight, sometimes almost 10 minutes. Usually when we swap a cam on an LS, that might be the case, but we usually soak it in oil the night before or whatever. It's usually in oil for like 24 hours, you usually don't have a problem. But we have had the problem before, so let's just open pray that that quiets up. It kind of sounds like a diesel. So I know some of you guys might be cringing and all that, but normally when I have had a problem with oil, with the lifter pumping up, a lot of times I will just kind of Throttle a little, little bit, and it just did get quieter a, a little bit. So it's coming. Usually as you go up in higher RPMs, it's going to uh, give it a little bit more oil pressure and hopefully we can get it in there. So it is quieter. It's not totally perfect yet, but it is very, very, very close. So we're getting there. Still revving, still going, getting better. It was like we had like maybe eight or nine or 10 or 12 or whatever at first. And then there's less and then there's less and less and less and less. Now we're down to the final little bit where I got like one, you can hear it's like. I think it's good. I think it's good. Let's go listen. Oh, listen to her purr. All right, dude, that's awesome. It's like a singer sewing machine. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Didn't have to get a new engine, Disaster just had to. Crisis averted. <laughs> yes. Whew. Crisis averted, for sure, man. That was great, that was great. I uh, just saved the day, for sure. So I'm, I'm very, very, very It took cool. a while for that to pump up. Yeah, I'm dude, really seriously. Surprised. So I drove this, again, kind of unknowingly about two miles or so. And then we were kind of idling it for... Cranking it up a couple times. Yeah, I mean, we probably had 45 seconds in cranking time. And then we had maybe a couple minutes of run time at idle. Just trying to troubleshoot, but man. Cletus, thought you broke another car, but this one, by the grace of God... We were able to make this thing work, so it'll live to drift another day, man. So uh, with with the same package that I bought, so hey, I'm I'm really stoked about that. 
Okay, so we got some new developments here going on with the BMW. I'm really, really excited to bring them to you. I uh, got some really neat stuff that was sent to me by ECS. So ECS sent me some BMW M3 upgraded two-piece rotors with pads as well as some stainless steel brake lines. Really, really stoked to get them on. They are going to lighten up the car. It's a little bit less unsprung weight. I'm a huge fan of all that type of thing. So not only will we have better braking, we will also be able to have a little bit less unsprung weight, which should help the car be a little bit snappier. Now, on another note, there's a couple other things, and I really, really appreciate what you guys write in the comments. From the suggestion of what you guys had with the M50 intake manifold, I picked that thing up for like $50. I think I got the fuel rail for about $20. I also am going to be putting on an M62 throttle body. That's actually out of the V8 4.4 liter. Uh, Jeb is going to help me with a flange that's going to bolt on that. So pretty much this is like going to a, uh, you know, an LS6 intake manifold with an LS2 throttle body, something that is used on a later model that is really cheap and obtainable. I think it's going to be really inexpensive and hopefully we'll get another 15 or 20 horse out of it. A little bit more usable, higher RPM there. Uh, also, we're getting rid of that DISA, which is that uh, variable length runner. Uh, a lot of times there's a lot of problems with that and we're deleting the idle air control valve. So you have to modify the cylinder heads. We're actually going to port the cylinder head on the car while we replace that intake manifold. That's gonna be something that's kind of fun. Kind of careless, but we're gonna try and do it in a very clean way and be able to do some before and after stuff. In doing something like that, I had to be able to get into the software. Now, I am so spoiled with HP tuners now. They have some freaking awesome software, whether it's for Ford or GM or Dodge, HP Tuners has you covered and they are pretty much one of the most user-friendly softwares on the planet. I've used a lot of other stuff in the past and their stuff is absolutely top-notch. Now I'm having to use some different software that is a real pain in the butt. It's not very uh, clean and some of the stuff is like just in abbreviations and then you have to go back to like a German abbreviation and make sure you're in the right table. It's really kind of annoying. However, this is really, really exciting. I am going to be able to do a number of things. So changing that intake manifold and throttle body, you have to delete the idle air control and all sorts of other things in, in this computer in order to make that intake manifold work. It is a slow, tedious process, but we are definitely getting there. So it's kind of required that you take the ECM down to the naked printed circuit board and then you apply a ground actually to an open circuit board. I was a little bit leery about that. And uh, normally they say that that is a two person job, but I kind of had to do it by myself apply a ground to this one itty bitty little very singular terminal in there and turn the key on. So next you got to use a couple different softwares that are somewhat crude. They're certainly not as refined as HP Tuners. HP Tuners pretty much does all this in one. So I'm using multiple different softwares, you know, this one and then this one. And then you have to hack certain things in order to be able to make everything work. It's kind of a multi-stage process, but it is pretty neat in that I am getting somewhere with it. A lot of the stuff had me a little leery because while you're doing this, you can pretty much brick the PCM while you're doing this. You know, if it loses power or it loses that ground, or if you're in the middle of flashing and for some reason it stops, you are kind of out of luck there, bud. So guys, I do have a lot of tuning experience under my belt. I'm actually starting my 19th year tuning. You know, I, I can definitely get by with a lot of things, but if it's one piece of advice that I could most certainly give you, it would be let the tuner that is in their area of expertise do what they know. Uh, somebody else that knows another platform, that is a whole different ball game. It's like, yes, I can tune. Yes, I can probably get by. But would I rather trust somebody that I know is a professional at a very, very high level and has years and years of experience on that platform? Absolutely. That's the way to go. So I get a lot of guys that are asking me, hey, can you tune my VQ or can you tune my Hyundai or whatever? And I'm like, no, I, I can't. I, you know, I specialize in the GMLS stuff. And that, yes, there is certain things that I can tune, uh, but I don't really, you know, go outside of that realm so much. I don't always tune LSs, but when I do, I use HP tuners. Stay tuned, my friends. We're losing weight, we're trimming the fat, we're making things more efficient, we're making more power, things are looking up. You know, look, I'm just a Chevy guy messing around with a platform that I don't even know, but I'm having fun doing it because this is really, really cheap power. So I think that we're gonna be able to get somewhere. I did also pick up another motor and we're gonna really do something kinda crazy stupid with that thing. We've got more stuff coming with uh, Uncle Sam and my dad's car. We're gonna be taking that to the track here very, very shortly. 
Uh, hopefully we're gonna do something with the Escalade coming up very, very soon. Also with what we're trying to do here is we're trying to do some things that we haven't really even found. So with that intake manifold swap, I looked and looked and looked on the internet and there wasn't any really good tutorials and people really didn't have good before and after results. And with all the stuff that we do with our LS stuff, we really try and bring you guys the top quality things that hopefully are going to save you either hundreds or thousands of dollars or maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars through your support and what you guys do with uh, our merchandise that allows us to be able to take time away from our really crazy busy schedule anyway. So thank you so much for your support. Please check out our merchandise in the link below. Check out Cutworm and all the stuff that he's got going on. He's got BMW shifters, all sorts of other parts and stuff. Check out Cutworm specialties on Instagram. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Okay, come on. Oh, jeez. <laughs>